Well, I'll tell you what I'm not going to do on this video, and that's try to go through the race from beginning to end, because it's far too complex and the video would be much too long. Instead of which, I'm just going to take a few salient points out and talk about those, if it's okay with you. The first is that it was an amazing race in the sense that there was, it was very complex. It was all about strategy. It was a very short lap. Calls had to be made on the fly. Some calls were great, some were not. That's what Formula One is all about. And the crowd loved it because their guy, Max Verstappen, won it. But I think the crowd would have been just as happy had he won it by a lap and a half with no incidents whatsoever. It was that sort of day. So Max Verstappen, Red Bull in Holland, four wins in a row now in 2022. It's the first time he's done that. And he's well on course, of course, to win more than 13 races this year and thus set a new record as he does so. So a brilliant day for Max. Now let's get down to it. As predicted from the pole, he took the lead. Really, really good opening lap. That's because he was on a new set of softs. Everybody else who was on soft tyres was running used softs, so that gave him a big advantage over Charles Leclerc at that point of the race. The two Mercedes, however, started on medium tyres, and that was a really interesting call from them. I mentioned yesterday the long run that George Russell did in the 15s, Lewis around there didn't do quite as many laps on the medium tyre and how good they looked. And they obviously had that sweet spot on the medium and it was a great call by Mercedes. We need to say that based on calls that were made later in the race. So really good aggressive strategy for Mercedes. And early on, Lewis able to stay, not with Carlos Sainz, but actually to stay within sight of Max and Charles Leclerc. Really, really impressive and worrying both Ferrari and Mercedes as he did so. And George Russell also held up a little bit behind Sergio Perez, but once he got clear, he too was right there in terms of pace. So that was the first thing that happened. Then they all came in for their tire changes and unsurprisingly, Max and Charles went to medium tires, but surprisingly, the medium wasn't that good in the conditions of the day. It was a nice day, 20% chance of rain, and it didn't rain. It was pretty warm, but there was something about the medium tire today that didn't make it sing, particularly with that fuel load. Whereas Mercedes, having started on the medium, went to the hard tire, logically as they would. And you're thinking, wow, now they've, they've elongated their first stint and they're gonna go the rest of the race on the hard tire on a one-stop strategy. And all of a sudden, Red Bull started to give gaps to Lewis Hamilton to Max Verstappen. And equally, Mercedes started to say, Max is 13 seconds ahead, Lewis, go for it, go for it. So that was a really interesting phase of the race. The Mercedes on the hard tire versus the Red Bull struggling a bit on the medium, a match around Zandvoort. Gotta reiterate, small, tight, narrow track, absolutely tailor-made, you could say, for Mercedes, as is really the Hungara ring as well. So my lap 40 with Mercedes going really well on the hard tyre and Max starting to struggle, albeit he's got his lead, but he's starting to struggle on the medium tyre. We started to hear radio messages along the lines of, Max, what are your thoughts on tyre compound? And Max saying, well, the medium tyre is not that spectacular. And simultaneously, Sergio Perez getting on the radio and saying, what are we going to do about compounds? Where are we going? So this was obviously something coming in from left field for the peripheral vision of Red Bull, wow, we didn't realize the hard tire was gonna be that good. So they're thinking in their minds, what should we do? Should we go to the hard tire now? Should we continue the medium run and go on the soft tire? And then the problem was solved for them because Yuki Tsunoda had a weird situation with his Alpha Tauri where, whereby he, we heard him on the radio saying, there's a problem with the wheels, problem, which suggested that after his pit stop, there was a wheel nut loose or something like that. And they told him to slow the car. He pulled the car up by the side of the track the next thing he knew, they were saying, no, it's okay, it's okay, keep going, which seemed bizarre at the extreme. And of course, that triggered quite a lot of conspiracy theory on the internet that Red Bull and AlphaTauri had been running in tandem here, and the best way to get Max out of this situation was to get a virtual safety car out there. I don't buy that. I'm not sure anybody seriously buys that because uh, it's difficult enough for a Formula One team to run its own team in the middle of a Grand Prix and get the strategy right, let alone to start coordinating with another. And anyway, I don't believe that uh, Red Bull would take the risk of doing that, bearing in mind it would be completely illegal to do so anyway. Having said all that, the virtual safety car did swap things around because as a result of that, Max and Sergio went to the hard tire, as you think they would, right, we'll go through the end of the race. It obviously looks very good on the Mercedes. And I imagine at this point they thought Mercedes would also run another set of hearts, bearing in mind how well they'd gone on them. But they didn't. They put the mediums on 
which obviously was going to be quicker. And as he came out of the pits and they lined up uh, for the restart, Lewis Hamilton got on the radio and said with some glee in his voice, come on, boys, this is it. As if, come on, guys, actually, I think, boys and girls, uh, I, as if finally we have a chance to win a Grand Prix. We've got Max on the hard time now, and the medium is not bad for us either. We're going to be in very, very good shape. And so it proved. They started to go a tenth quicker, two tenths quicker there. George usually a little bit quicker than Lewis uh, when he wasn't in traffic, but Lewis too putting a lot of pressure on Max. And, and suddenly the gaps were Max to Lewis, not Charles Leclerc by now was out of the picture. So it was a really interesting motor racing brewing, brewing up to what potentially was going to be an astonishing climax because you had to think now that on that hard tire, probably they'd be, if it got too near, they'd probably bring Max in for a set of softs at the end and try to make sure they got the win that way. Either way, we were going to see lots of overtaking. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen because Valtteri Bottas pulled to a halt, blown engine or the engine stopped in his Alfa Romeo in the braking area for turn one, putting out the virtual safety car and then the safety car, which came through the pit lane as it turned out. Red Bull strategist Hannah Schmitz did a great job and called Max in straight away to go to a set of softs. Here at last was relief, get him on a set of softs. The car would be good enough, Max would be good enough to be able to get it through to the finish. And with a set of softs, he was protected in every area. But the interesting thing is that uh, Mercedes had discussed this situation before the race. So we hear now from Toto Wolff. And their thinking was track position, track position. If we can get to the lead of this race, we'll get both cars on the same tire. And if we're in the situation where we're on the medium and maybe Red Bull come in for a soft, we will have both cars on the same tire to protect the lead. And whoever's in front, presumably Lewis, because he was ahead on the grid, that's the way we'll do it. So Lewis then led the field. He, he got the lead, obviously, when Max came in for that set of softs. And he's now leading the race behind a safety car. And the instruction is to go through the pit lane. Uh, and he does. He duly leads the field through the pit lane and follows instructions from the team not to stop, but to keep going. But George, who's in second place, takes it upon himself to say, no, 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 I'm fed up, fed up with the tyres. I'm going to come in for softs. I've got to have softs. The mediums are going off. And comes in and they say, right, right, right. And they put a set of softs onto George's car. And it's almost a free pit stop because they're going through the pit lane. Anyway, if you look at the times through the pit lane, that lap, Lewis did 14.1 from the beginning of the pit lane to the end. And George Russell, 21.3. So seven second pit stop, really, including the in and out. So there's George now on a, admittedly a used set of softs, but he's on soft tires. Lewis is leading the race on medium and Max behind him is also on a new set of softs. So all of a sudden the dynamic of the race has changed completely. Lewis Hamilton was the big threat. Now Lewis, a bit like the Abu Dhabi situation, a bit like Charles Leclerc at the British Grand Prix this year is left out to dry yet again. And you can imagine how annoyed he was because the idea, as we understand it at Mercedes, was, as I say, to have two cars, if the situation arose, on mediums, both on the same tyres anyway, uh, protecting Lewis, if you like, Mac, George doing a good job of blocking Max, as Perez did to Lewis at Abu Dhabi, and, uh, and see whether they could win the race that way. And when Lewis found out that George had gone to softs, you can imagine how he felt. He went ballistic, ballistic on the radio. How could you guys do this to me, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't blame him, really, because it's not the first time it's happened to him. And he had a really good opportunity to take it to Max. I don't think the mistake was stopping George. The mistake was not putting Lewis onto a set of soft tires. And I don't understand why they didn't, because they'd seen Max go to soft. So at that moment, to my mind, anything they discussed before the race in any sort of briefing, strategy analysis went out the window because Max Verstappen is now on a set of soft tires. What is the point of keeping your two cars out there, even if you've got this great track position and keeping them on mediums? I mean, track position when the race is in full flow is one thing. Track position when you're bunched up behind a safety car is a completely different thing and has nothing like the same currency or value. And, and it looks to me as if Mercedes, in their way, got locked into this way of thinking, track position, track position, uh, and we've got to stick to the strategy. And they didn't allow, A, they didn't allow for the gumption of George Russell just to do what he correctly should do as a racing driver and force the issue and get onto the set of tyres that he wanted to be on. Great call by George. And equally, they were inflexible when they saw Max coming in for the soft tyre. I just didn't... 
understand. I still don't understand why they wouldn't have put Lewis on the soft. It just seems bizarre to me. It's the same with Charles Leclerc at the British Grand Prix. Same with Charles going onto a set of intermediates uh, at his first pit stop at Monaco. Exactly the same thing. So, yeah, George was all over Lewis. And Lewis, I think, probably because of the situation and because he was so irate and disappointed and torn apart, when George came up to pass him, which he was easily going to do, uh, Lewis jinked slightly to the right and, and caused George to lift slightly to, to move. And this is in the toe, in DRS toe, coming down the straight, right opposite the Mercedes pit. And I think Lewis did that as a way of saying to everybody in the Mercedes garage, you know, that's... I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with this at all. But before we got to that point, of course, Lewis is leading the race into the restart. And there's Max on his set of soft tyres. And I said yesterday that Max ultimately has a big advantage around Zandvoort because of his top speed and the way he could translate and parlay that top speed into looking after the tyres and doing a nice job in all the three sectors because he's always got that top speed advantage. But for most of the race, Red Bull didn't use that arrow advantage that they obviously have. They had the engine turn way down so that Max's top speed on any given lap was within three or four kilometers an hour of the Ferraris and the Mercedes. Here he got to say in brackets, Mercedes really quick uh, relative to the Ferrari, right up there with the Ferrari now in terms of top speed. So you're thinking, wow, you know, it's amazing that Max isn't as quick in a straight line in the race as he is in qualifying. But of course, the answer is that they had the engine turned way down to be super reliable. But here we are at the restart and Max is on soft tires. Lewis is on the medium tire. And all Max is thinking logically is the warm up on the medium is going to be slower than on, 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 on the soft tire. My best chance between here and the checkered flag is turn one when Lewis is going to be struggling probably with temperatures in the braking area. So he does a really good job, hangs back a little bit coming through the bank last corner. There's no DRS in play because it's a restart. And they've got the engine turned right up on the Red Bull. And he just halfway down the straight, he's just blasting past him as if there's no tomorrow. Absolutely amazing. And on that lap, he's well over 300 kilometers an hour. He's sort of seven, eight kilometers an hour quicker than he's been at any stage in the race. And the next two laps, he does a 13.6. And by then it's all over. Lewis Hamilton's a sitting duck for everybody, for George Russell, for Charles Leclerc, and uh, a very disappointed driver at the end of it. As he did his slow down lap, Lewis, to his credit, listened to what Toto said, you know, we win and lose as a team and all that stuff. And he did a good job of thanking the team for the pit stops and how good the Merck pit stops were. But of course, you know, they, he could have done with one extra pit stop, which was the one they should have given him to put him on the soft tyre. That was left unsaid, but no doubt will be talked about because, you know, how many times have we seen this year a situation where a driver needs to overrule the team. And that's exactly what George did. Rookie that he is with Mercedes in this season. He just got on the radio and says, no, no, I don't want the medium. I want the soft. Put, put the soft on. And it was a great call. So a tumultuous race for Max Verstappen and Red Bull in front of Max's home crown. Amazing scenes before the start when the crowd were given red, white and blue flags and all waved them in the shape of the Dutch flag as loud music was played right around the circuit. Very, very inspiring to see that, no doubt, from Max Verstappen. And a great pass, a great pass, sort of Nigel Mansell-esque in front of your home crowd type pass to take the lead at the restart from Lewis Hamilton. If that had everybody, of course, on, on their feet. For Mercedes, meanwhile, it'd be a very, very difficult debrief. And of course, that's two extremely difficult races for Lewis Hamilton in a row now. It's one thing to talk about track position and to plan to be aggressive with track position. It's quite another not to be aggressive with your selection of tyre compounds. They did a very good job, I think, starting on the medium tyre. But then not to put both drivers on the soft tyre when Max, you know, is on the soft tyre is blinking in the headlights. And there's no doubt in my mind that had Lewis been on the soft tyre, he was quick enough and he was aggressive enough and he had enough adrenaline flowing possibly to have taken this race to Max Verstappen. But of course, we'll never know. And, that's the, uh, and that was the Dutch Grand Prix. Lots of unanswered questions. I suppose you could say yet again that the old cliche has to come into play. Isn't it good that we've only got a couple of days for the next race? And from Lewis's point of view, he doesn't have to dwell on things too much. Well, I think he's been not dwelling on things quite well for too long now. And I still take my hat off to him at how he retains his resilience and enthusiasm for racing when things like this continue to go wrong. And I think that's the first time and I've predicted this from the start, that there will be some friction between George 
and Lewis and whether or not Lewis will see it that George didn't follow instructions and did his own thing and just came and put the soft tire on and he Lewis could have done the same but he's a team player or whether Lewis will see it as the team not running George and Lewis well enough is something will have to remain behind closed doors for the time being but I think whatever they're thinking will become evident over the next few weeks and possibly months in Formula One. So yeah, really difficult. I suppose, you know, the corollary of that is that if Valtteri Bottas was still driving for Mercedes, he probably wouldn't have driven the race that George drove today and he wouldn't have been second. That's almost a given. So from that point of view, I think Toto Wolff would be excused for saying, well, you know, we did the right thing. George is this great racing driver. But if you've got Lewis Hamilton, as I've always said, do you really want to cramp his style? With George Russell that's the question and had they had Valtteri maybe he would have been on the mediums and Lewis would have been on the soft that's the other flip side and that's probably something that might be going through Lewis's mind as well anyway Italian Grand Prix next weekend we'll also be doing a debrief a further debrief live stream debrief about the Dutch Grand Prix lots of questions lots to talk about I'm sure and that'll be uh, tomorrow Monday at five o'clock UK time join us then if you'd like to express your opinion ask questions we'll have a special guest as well to help things along and in the meantime thanks for watching and looking forward to Monza see you then